This car came with a radio called an RNEG, and it was a bit crap. So I replaced it with an RT6. It was a lot better. And then I got sick of that and I replaced it with an Android head unit. As you can see, the Android head unit is gone, and the RT6 is back, which begs the question, why? Why did I remove the Android head unit after only, what, four months? Before I get into the nitty gritty, I will have to do a bit of a recap and describe some of the shortcomings of the Android head unit and also some advantages. I switched from this, the RT6, to the Android head unit because of an occurrence where I switched on the car, I put the car into reverse, the parking sensors took a very long time to come online and I hit a lamppost. You know, stupid me, but anyway, I blamed the radio at the time. So I changed it for an Android head unit. And there are videos describing this whole process on the channel if you feel like going and watching them. Now, the Android head unit did have some foibles, and I described it in its own video, but I'll do a quick recap. First off, it was a touchscreen, so that means looking away from the road, taking aim at what it was that you're trying to hit, tapping it, and then looking again to make sure that what it was was activated. And that didn't happen a lot with the Android head unit because it was very slow and laggy. It was my fault because I did buy the, the second cheapest one, but I had a reason to. If I didn't like the unit, I wouldn't have spent too much money. It was the second cheapest one because the cheapest was like eight euros cheaper. So for an extra eight euros, I got double the processing capacity or whatever. But to go the next step up, it was something like 80 euros. And I wasn't actually willing to spend that much money. The other big annoyance I had was how the steering wheel controls did not work well at all with the Android head unit. The unit came with a CAN bus, a little box that you just plug into the back and it maps the steering wheel controls for you. However, it didn't work very well. The only buttons that actually worked properly were the skip and previous track buttons. That's it. The volume button, you had to keep pressing it until something popped up on the screen and only then the volume would go up and down in very small increments. Menu button didn't do anything. The mute button did work, but I do prefer it when it works also as a pause button as it does with the RT6 radio. And then you had three buttons for the Bluetooth menu, which is excessive in my humble opinion. Phone call audio quality was extremely poor as well, especially in terms of the microphone. People would not hear me, especially if I was going over rough surfaces. My voice would become, according to them, completely inaudible. And also the actual sound quality of the phone call I got wasn't anything special. Lots of interference and little sounds like that during the call. So not good at all. In terms of wireless connectivity, the Android head unit was a bit crap. It worked well with a cable. That was fine, a USB cable, just plugged it in, ready to go. Wirelessly, usually you had to switch on the car, disconnect the phone, then reconnect it, and only then would Android Auto work. But it didn't work very well. Sometimes it didn't work at all. You know, the navigation just stayed put and the audio, like if I was listening to music, it would like break up a lot. The screen was very glary. I know you could switch it off, but there were these icons that always stayed on and cycled through colors. Just found it a bit annoying. And I didn't like the fact that all the music that I copied onto the actual memory of the unit was all jumbled up all the time. You'd, you'd play a folder and it would end up playing the entirety of the music files in alphabetical order, which again was a bit annoying. But it wasn't all b There were some very good things. There were two good things and one small good thing. The small good thing was the fact that when I turned the car off, the screen would stay on for just a few seconds, enough for me to turn the key back on and whatever music I was listening to would continue to play. With this radio, as soon as I turn the car off, it disconnects from the phone, that's it. You turn it back on, you have to wait until the phone reconnects and only then can you continue to listen to the music that you were listening to prior to switching the car off. Small thing. The next good thing was the audio quality. It was really excellent. Uh, and was superior to this radio, by the way. It's not that this radio is terrible. It isn't. Let me make that clear. This is perfectly acceptable audio quality, but the Android head unit's quality was a notch above this one. And last, but definitely not least, Android Auto. This doesn't have Android Auto. That's the thing. Android Auto is absolutely brilliant. For those who don't know, Android Auto allows you to interact with your phone in a way that's compatible and optimized for driving. And it was brilliant. 
The reason behind the Android head unit, it wasn't just the fact that this radio took so long to switch on, is because I was enamored with the idea of Android Auto. You just get your phone, you can plug in whatever destination just by voice or whatever, and navigate there. You've got traffic information, you've got businesses and shops, things like that, that do not appear in this navigation. To navigate here is a bit of a pain in the backside. Let me bring you closer. So you have to press the button, go on in, enter an address. Uh, yeah, looks, let's go here, put in one and another, and then another. Yes, it does eliminate some of the addresses that you could put in. But imagine doing this every time you had to go somewhere. It's a nightmare. This will do, go here. OK, OK, OK. What Android Auto did was make this a lot more streamlined and easier to do. So I could visit multiple places in a single day without too much hassle. And I'd know the traffic and it would be up to date. It's got all those advantages. Also, the interface with music is brilliant. You've got a Spotify interface. Other streaming services are available, but it also allowed me to see what was actually playing. And this doesn't. Yeah, basically Android Auto is brilliant. So if Android Auto was so good, then why did I get rid of the head unit, you may ask? That's a valid question. Well, what happened was, one day, the Spotify interface, that stopped working. There was just like a blank square where the interface should be. The music would still be audible, but I'd have to fiddle with my phone if I wanted to skip tracks and things like that, or see what was playing, I don't know. Something was wrong. So I did what anyone else would do in that situation, and I did a factory reset of the head unit to see if that would clear everything up. It did not. When the head unit rebooted, all of the apps pertaining to Android Auto had gone. The head unit didn't actually have Android Auto. It had a cheap Chinese clone called Zlink that sort of like emulated Android Auto, something like that. And it was gone. Anyway, I got in touch with the seller and they provided me with a link from where I could download the app again. But truth be told, by the time they had provided me with the link for that app, I had already reinstalled this radio because I'd come to the conclusion, and I really wasn't regretting taking out the Android head unit. Simply put, I missed a lot of things on this radio. I missed little things. I missed the fact that this, this shows the temperature, the outside temperature. The Android head unit didn't. I even contacted the seller to see if they could help me, you know, make the Android head unit get a reading from the car's inbuilt thermometer, but to no avail. It didn't work. They gave me some crap answer that, you know, led nowhere. I like the legibility, you know, the clock's nice and big. I like the fact that it's very well integrated. That's huge. All these buttons work and do things and it's good. I like that. I also miss the fact that the parking sensors work very well here. They did not on the Android head unit. I had to install like this cheap speaker that plugged into the back of the unit and then you just leave it inside the dashboard and it'll just go beep 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 in a very monotone way. Whereas this unit actually has a much better parking sensor setup. So for example if I get close to an obstacle at the front, you've got a certain sound for the front and also it will come from the side where the obstacle is. So if the obstacle's on the left, the sound will come from the left speaker and it's got a different sound for the rear speaker. Boop, boop, boop. See? It's a different sound. So you know if the obstacle is either in front or behind. That's brilliant. I am not going to go back to the Android head unit. It's sitting in a box waiting for its fate. So if you're still here, thanks very much, first of all. And it just goes to show that the conclusion is Aftermarket radios have a level of integration that is not seamless, at least not as seamless as obviously a model made specifically for the car and more or less by the car maker. It's a world of difference. Second, don't cheap out on an aftermarket head unit because if you do, then like me, you're gonna get you know crappy hardware and iffy software. And third, it's okay to change your mind. I mean, in my case, at least I you know, bought a cheap unit. And actually, I bought it with the money that I got from selling the original radio. So I'm not out of pocket at all, thank goodness. But yeah, 
it's okay to change your mind and it's it would be nice to be able to try these things before you buy them but you can't but anyway that's why this channel exists i screw up so you guys don't have to and i think the android hedging it was was at least this particular one this was not a good decision so now you know so hopefully this will be useful if you're thinking of getting an Android head unit, not just in this car, in any model of car. You may be on the fence, so this might be helpful for you. So yeah, hopefully it will be. And if you did think it was helpful, please leave a like. Leave a like anyway, why not? Just a clicky to of a button. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. I thank you very much for watching. I bid you farewell.